Yeah, g'day, how you going? Welcome to the first and possibly last instalment of the channel. I didn't realise how hard it was to be in front of a camera until I was in front of one, but here we go. Here we have my 1980 HZ Holden 1 tonner. It's a very late built HZ 1 tonner before they went to the WB, or as I like to call it, the worst build. In this build, you'll see me turning this bucket of rust into a bucket of rust that will spin tyres. I'll also be doing another build and documenting it. Initial build was to lower it, big wheels, patina it. Second build didn't really succumb to much so we won't talk about that but now it's back home. I've got a 308, a Trimatic, a Ford Falcon, M78, I've got 411 gears, true track, billet axles. And today we'll go for a bit of a walk around the car. I'll show you what's been done. And then we'll pull it out, swing the motor in so that we can start getting to work on that. So let's go and have a look at the mess. So we'll start at the business end. Now I've got the traditional commercial front. I am going to get rid of the indicators. I do love them but and think they're iconic and that's how the general intended with them. But I've got headlights for it with the uh, integrated halo indicators so they look really nice and I'll put them in I'll still retain the commercial front bar and the, the farm truck grill now under the bonnet it has had quite a bit of work done firewalls flattened off as you can see I think I'm gonna buy a kit to have the wiper motor inside the plenum I've already done the rust and the rat support I've replaced this moustache inner guards gotten rid of the line and yes they still do work with standard bonnet hinges this is going to be removed um, this line's gone as you can see they normally have a line here now this car's also had the front end replaced with the Kingswood Country front end kit you can't really see it from there I'll look under here so we've got Everything brand new. It's got CRS, rod shop, uh, drop spindles. It's got alloy gerlocks that have been all rebuilt. Brand new rotors, new ball joints, new tie rods. I cannot urge this enough. We all rebuild the front ends early in the build. Make sure you grease up everything because they will dry out and crack and you'll be doing it twice. Now, I'll have a look at the uh, the cab which is I think something's had been going on in here seeing as it's all been painted white door trims are usable all right now I'll show some of you guys something to look for when uh, purchasing one of these or looking over one to see how bad it is up here where the vent goes this one's really bad, this tube's gone. But the worst part is, let me get that one, up under the cow. And this one is a bit of a worst case scenario. This one is all the way along the old bog snails hanging through. She's just chockers full of bog. But thankfully, there is places like Rare Spares or Muscle Car Parts or Resto Country and you can buy the whole cow, the whole plenum and just be done with it. No patch repairs, no bogging up old repairs that you're not happy with. Just brand new. You can get it to gap better through the doors and the guards and just be done with it and move on to the next part of the car. Perfect visors in this car. The, uh, the crash pad's perfect, which is a real rarity these days. She was a three speed, so it's still got the Manuel pedal in there, which will be removed. I've actually rewired this car from the tail lights forward to the up under the kick panel from all auto recreations. I cannot recommend them enough. That's a great kit and it's really simple to use. We've also replaced on the sills here 
I get these folded up in 1.6 from my local local metal place and they go all the way into here so a lot better way of attaching it than just welding in here that just sucks so if you can get a template and cut it out through through here make yourself a nice square and just get your local to go and do it 1.6 that's all you need doors if the doors are rough they will get rescued um, you can get them these days and it's a lot easier than patching up the lower guards have been done not perfect but they'll do the job now rear ends have been redone new shocks the tray i built last summer absolutely sweated it out and it's your not your typical square one it's more of a coffin shaped one also the rear bar that's all been hand fabricated about halfway done it still needs to be blasted but it'll do for now for what the intentions are uh, this side more or less so what's going on new seal new lower guard We know it's full of bog. Now the roof. Now I'll climb up on the tray so I can show you. This might look like an original car, mostly, but these are some telltale signs that this car's full of bog. Now bog will not bleed through. So we've got it here and here. This ring is where the metal starts. So there is bog here and I can guarantee it. There's also bog here, there's bog here. So when you're looking at a car and they've got these rings, it doesn't matter where, it doesn't have to be the roof. See, we've got one over here. This is a common spot to rust out. See, we've got it along here. Just that, you can see that it's a bog edge there. I can almost guarantee that she goes all the way up there. That is a big bogged patch panel. You can see just where the bog f fades out through it, the car. But I'm not too fussed about that. If the roof needs to come off, the roof needs to come off. But for now, you can stay like that. The wheels, they're just the OG Show Wheel Streeters. I've got 20 by 10s for the rear with a 305 tyre. So they're inside just so that I don't have to clean them twice like these ones. But yeah, this is a. And that's it. That's all you need to take off the front. You might be a bit blessed and have a radiator or a bonnet cable and need to unplug them, but two at the front for the radiator support. Front bar, you got top of your guard, bottom of your guards, and the two that go inside on the kick panel. And that's how they're off. Now you don't have to take the front end off to put a motor and box in, but it makes life a hell of a lot easier. You will need a friend to lift the whole front off. Just grab them underneath the guards here, tilt it back, move away, tilt the front, tilt the back down, and you're done. It's relatively simple. So here we are bright and early. Got the motor all ready to go. In front of the gantry. Now this thing was buried about six years deep in the back shed so in case you're wondering how deep that is it's all of it So that's the end of things here for today. Now, putting
putting the motor in only took 17 minutes, which isn't the fastest time I've ever done it, but it's not the slowest either. But to give you some sort of idea, I did a BY Commodore just shortly after this, and it was only a motor, not a motor in box, but it took me two hours just to get the motor in and marry it up to the box. I'm still holding on a couple of fast parts, uh, extractors I haven't ordered yet. Until then, take it easy.